Welcome to the Wiesenberg Report with the icon, Harvey Wiesenberg. And Harvey, it was in Newsday today, shaping the island's shoreline. And uh, this was a picture taken um, right on uh, a place you know very well, um, between Grand Avenue and New York Avenue in Long Beach. A picture of heavy equipment that moves sand in to our beaches to prevent further beach erosion and helping our community so we don't have to deal with flooding in the future, which happened during Hurricane Sandy. And Harvey, during your many years of public service, being a lifelong uh, Long Beach resident, you've done with this uh, issue before, so we'd love to get the Wiesenberg perspective on the Long Beach shorelines. Thank you, Harry. The picture that you're going to see of what took place along our, our, our city is only three miles long. Our ocean front, uh, the boardwalk is 2.2 miles. And uh, the beauty of what we have in Long Beach is an expression that I had and I spent my whole life in Long Beach, is that we get the sand in our shoes. What that means is, that once you come to Long Beach and you live here, you never want to leave. And if you leave, you come back, because you're never going to be able to have the beauty that God gave us to the most beautiful beach and the nice small city, one of only two cities on Long Island, Long Beach and Grand Cove. But Long Beach, the city by the ocean, uh, gives everybody an opportunity, uh, the blessing that God gave us with a beautiful beach and ocean. Unfortunately, Mother Nature as we all knew and uh, witnessed. Um, I was here in 1938. I was only a youngster. But I was really impressed with that hurricane. When I looked out a window and I lived in an apartment house and I saw a house, half of a house, the roof and part of the house, going down Broadway, it made an impression on me. That was a real, that was the big one. That was the 100 year hurricane that hit Long Beach. And the reality is that we're gonna have hurricanes and there's Mother Nature that's providing the resources um, that we have to address to make sure that we have a safe environment. Now, what just has taken place with a superstorm, not a hurricane, that took place in Long Beach and or throughout our region, uh, it was devastation. Mother Nature always wins and you have to realize that, but. At 8 o'clock on a full moon high tide on that night, I was standing on a balcony and I lived on Grand Boulevard between Grand and New York Avenue and I was watching the ocean. Being a lifeguard for many years here and always my whole life on the beach, this ocean was unbelievable angry. The boardwalk is 17 feet high and I'm watching the ocean come in and it didn't go over the boardwalk, it just underneath it. And then I watched the gate go down and then I watched the water come and I saw four cars that were parked in the area there move and float away and go across the street on Broadway onto the Catholic School land. And I said, something very, very unbelievable is taking place here and nobody expected this. Not a hurricane, it's only a super storm. But look at the devastation. Long Beach a half a mile wide. Reynolds Channel on one side and the ocean on the other. The tidal surge, people don't know what a tidal surge is. The tidal surge is the pressure of the water from being forced across, that means that Reynolds Channel was being forced and the water raised over the bulkheads. So we had water coming from the north and we had water coming from the south. I never knew cars could float until I saw my car floating in the garage. But it was a devastation and the quality of life and the devastation that took place in our city was traumatic. How did we recover? Well, we recovered because we have people who reside in our community that anybody who had anything shared it. We all gave to each other, everybody. I want to tell you, a very diverse population in my city, 35,000, and everybody was there helping each other. People from all over the country came to help, and they were impressed by the people that live here and the work that they did together to try to help each other and do help each other. How are we going to recover? Well, we're going to recover because that's the quality of people that reside here. 
and our city employees are wearing a CSEA shirt. This is our union. Work is for the city. We have full-time and part-time. But you know what? They live here, most of them, and I want you to know they're dedicated to our city. So what are we going to do? Well, we've got the federal government. They came in. They're going to rebuild our boardwalk. It's nice to have a federal government that gives you $44 million to fix the boardwalk. But the boardwalk is the main line in our community, and it was a beautiful job that was done. But now what are we going to do about the beaches? Well, we're going to dredge. We're going to dredge, and the federal government's going to do the dredging, and they're going to rebuild the, the jetties or the groins. They're going to go out into the water to break the waves coming in to help save and replenish and be able to replenish our beaches. And then they started to do dredging. Well, we have some real pictures of what took place. It was a horror. It was a horror to look at the, the black stuff that was on the beach and the water that was there. And on a full moon high tide, the water is back right up to the boardwalk. And then they're going to dredge this beach and restore it. Well, they did. And I want you to know, in the couple of years that took place, we finished the job basically this year. But did we do the job that has to be done? And the answer really is, we're never going to, I don't say never, not in the immediate future are we going to have that soft white sand that everybody knew as the beach that Long Beach had, the best beach in this country, best of the island. People that go around the world, no beaches that I've ever seen had the sand and the quality of sand that we had. It's Long Beach, and that's Long Beach's greatest gift again. Our beach, our boardwalk, and the ability for people to have happiness. You don't have to have money. The things that I always taught my children, the things that I love most in this world don't cost money. That's to be able to walk on the boardwalk with your wife or your family or your children, go on the beach and be together. It doesn't cost money to be able to do that. And we needed this to be, be, be rebuilt and do it in the same way that we would be protected for future, from the future of any kind of natural disaster that could be brewing out from June to November as the hurricane season. Well, the sand isn't the same as it was. The beaches aren't the same as they were. The jetties, well, we have a couple, but they're never even removed on a high tide. They're underwater, which is really a danger. And I hope that we're going to be able to address that. And I want you to know the recreation and the, the, the resort of, of Long Beach from a small city became a place to go to. It's not the Hamptons, but it's much closer. And the quality of people that are here are just as good, if not better, than the people that go out to the Hamptons. Uh, they have the financial resources, but we have the people, personal resources. And the best resource I can bring to view are the people that work for my city, full-time and part-time. But I'm telling you, they're out there sifting this speech. They're doing everything they can. The city employees did a marvelous job. I mean, we have over 100,000 people coming out here on weekends. And our city is servicing all of the special events that take place. Our city employees. I mean, our city is pretty close to bankruptcy. And the reality is we're going to need financial resources. And I'm waiting for the government to be able to get some money to be able to do the infrastructure for our city. Because if we don't have the infrastructure, we're not going to be able to stay solid to be able to have quality of life and a health, safety environment for our people. But those days are to go. The sand is not the same. We have volleyball tournaments. You know, everybody uses our, our recreation resources to raise money for not-for-profit agencies. It's a great thing. We have runs, we have volleyball tournaments, and all of these things generate funding for people for so many good basic causes of quality of life. So Long Beach is a resort community that services the needs of the entire region. And the people that are taking care of it are our union members and our part-time workers who work together to give us the quality of life that we have. And God bless our workers who work overwork, underpaid. And I'll tell you, we're so grateful because we've had a very successful summer so far in our lifeguards. I want you to know being a lifeguard for more than 60 years, the ocean has changed. We have sandbars 200 yards out. We have riptides, but we have very trained professional lifeguards who are doing a marvelous job and have done a marvelous job. You know, we saved a lot of people this year because of the change in the ocean itself. Anyway, it's a thank you time. 
to be able to bring to view the fact that uh, the people that are employed by our city, the workers, this is where everybody should really take the time to thank our sanitation department, our recreation department, beach maintenance who has been working to make the sand on our beaches as good as it can be. It's going to get better in time, but it'll never do what it had to be done without the desire and the love of the people that work for our city. Uh, we thank you so much for your perspective, and um, I also want to thank you because this Wednesday night, uh, Long Beach Wrestling Team is going to be having their annual fundraiser uh, to uh, help the Long Beach Wrestling Team throughout the year, send the kids on tournaments and uh, throughout the season and through the off season as well. And uh, my friend Ray Adams and Miguel Rodriguez do a great job uh, running the Long Beach Wrestling Team. And, this is really incredible that since Ray has been the coach at Long Beach, uh, they've had 10 state champions, which is really incredible because most wrestling programs are lucky to have one or two state champions. Long Beach has had 10. And uh, Harvey has donated two of his books, For the Love of a Child, that two uh, lucky recipients at the uh, fundraiser on Wednesday night will uh, be receiving a raffle prizes and uh, two lucky uh, Residents probably from Long Beach will be enjoying your book and reading all about this amazing book. And Harvey, it's interesting to message. Why don't you tell uh, the fans out there a little more about this great book, which will be raffled off Wednesday night at the uh, at the Lido Golf Club for the Long Beach wrestling team. I would <laughs> speaking about wrestling coaches, Paul Gillespie, the chief lifeguard. He'll be there. He's he's one of the best. Nobody more dedicated in town than Paul Gillespie. And he's the head of our lifeguards. But, uh, and by the way, I was the state champion. I was Long Beach's first state champion just a couple of years ago. Anyway, um, the book, the book is a love story. God gave me a mission. God gave me an angel, a saint, and a mission. The angel is my special child who could never speak or cry. And this book is about love. And the unconditional love you can get from a special child it's like no other love you can experience. And what we have to do is awaken people to be aware of the beauty of our special children and those people who care for them, the wonderful people they are. They're doing God's work, taking care of our special needs. And this book talks about love. And uh, I just think that's what the world needs today. And it's my pleasure to be able to uh, have this book out and about. It's, it's available. All, all the funding that comes in when, when the purchase of the book goes to not-for-profit agencies. But I just, um, I just talk about uh, Tommy Canna and the head of beach maintenance and, and, the, and the staff, because I see them every day. I'm on that beach every day on that boardwalk, and our people are out there doing the best they can to maintain the quality of care, the best that we can have to be able to retain the beauty of our beaches and our community and our city. So I'm, again, saying thank you to all of those employees who dedicate their life to helping our city keep it clean, healthy, and safe. Great work. And uh, lastly, I just want to say this. On Wednesday night, when I go to the Long Beach uh, Lido Golf Club to uh, benefit the uh, Long Beach wrestling, the high school wrestling team, um, it's going to be uh, great to help the kids and raise money. Uh, it's a great program. And Harvey is donating these two books. And uh, I want to talk about a connection that Harvey has with high school students uh, all over uh, Long Island, New York. Several years ago, there was a goalie in lacrosse, Akinpora was his last name, Louis Akinpora. He was in ninth grade. And he was playing goalie uh, for his team. His parents were watching with pride, seeing how their ninth grade son could be starting on a varsity lacrosse team. And Louis Akampura took a shot to the ball. One of the other lacrosse players on the other team took a shot, hit him in the chest, and Louis Akampura died instantly. Terrible tragedy. Well, my friend to the right, Harvey Wiesenberg, was an assemblyman at the time, and he decided to uh, take matters into his own hands, and he uh, worked on creating a bill where a defibrillator would be at every high school event 
in the future. So God forbid a tragedy like this where the young Louis Akampura died um, on the spot, he could have been saved. And because of Harvey's bill, which became law, it has saved many lives. And me personally, I was once at a high school sporting event where during the national anthem, the grandfather of the quarterback from Locust Valley suffered a heart attack during the national anthem. They ran up from the field and brought the defibrillator in the stands and saved his life. I saw that with my own eyes. If it wasn't for your law, that man would have died. But, Aubrey, um, that was an amazing law, and your law has saved hundreds of lives. I just want to... I'd like to share this with you. Ellen and I were honored by the American Heart Association. And we went to a survivor's dinner. And I sat around a table where people who were pronounced dead were sitting there having dinner with us. It was an amazing life experience. And you know, it was interesting because they sent us to Washington. And Ellen and I walked in and we got a standing ovation nationally. And I called Governor Pataki, you know, who was our governor of the state of New York. And I told him, I, listen, we made history because we're the only, only state that has defibrillators and authors made it a law to have it in every school in the state of New York. And then we, it expanded. Any building with over a thousand people, any workout room, or I, I mean, we just had, and they said thousands of people over the years have been saved because we had defibrillators. The cops and our first responders and our firemen were all so happy because we are really saving people's life. And it was all because of the courage of the family, of the Akampura family, John and Karen, and their dedication and foundation, making everybody aware about the training that's necessary and how easy it is that you can save somebody else's life. And uh, you can't make a mistake. So if in doubt, have a defibrillator and any kind of a resource where you have people because it is a life-saving device. Anyway, look how lucky, but the heroes of this story are the Akampura family, because they went out and worked together with me to get that legislation done. And with that, great man has done great things in his life. This is Harvey Wiesenberg, and that was the Wiesenberg Perspective.